So, all right, so this is the next part that um, I'll be honest, I don't think we're gonna be able to get through all of this because um, there's a lot on this trend, but this is all from section 31, okay? So um, this is the case we're saying, okay, cool. We have our debt time series, get some interesting information. Now what we wanna do, I'll go ahead and make sure we do a restart. Go away, there we go. Um, so now we actually say, okay, let, let's go see what our data looks like. And this is when we start looking for trends, okay? And so as you can probably guess, like with most data sets that you are interested in time series, you might start having some trends. And basically, I'm gonna kind of summarize really quickly, is that the trend that we really want is stationary, okay? And stationary basically means there isn't a trend. Okay? And we'll see what this looks like. So stationary, here we are. So, um, oops, I realized this is messed up. So I wanted to show, so there's this great blog that shows this part. Um, this, what's it called? The curriculum shows some similar images, but I'm just pulling it directly from here. I have some broken images because I didn't import them over, but pull you over there. So this right here is a stationary series. Basically, it's something that doesn't have any extra trends within it. So there's a nice kind of period going through. It's nice and even. Um, so this stationary, it would just be stationary and this would be non-stationary. And we'll see these different examples. So I think I show right here. Um, so the first thing is that the mean is not a function of time. So when we say something is stationary, it's not these things. So if the mean is a function of time, it looks like this. Okay, so basically that average is going up and up and up and up. There's a trend in there. Even though it's going periodic, going over and over and over again, that mean is going up and up and up. So clearly this is a trend upwards, right? Another one that we say is not stationary is that the variance is not a function of time. So this is heteroscedastic, right? So heteroscedastic, as you guys recall, um, hopefully you guys recall, is that our variance of, from the mean actually gets wider and wider. So what this looks like is essentially our pattern getting wider and wider or smaller and smaller. So you can see here, if I imagine actually drawing on top of here, um, our kind of like our variance here, it kind of it balloons outward and even afterwards it kind of balloons downward. So this way is our variance is not constant. It is changing with a function of time. So this might mean that there's something else about our data. This is another different kind of trend, okay? And our last one here is our covariance. And our covariance here, kind of an interesting one, is that basically you kind of have much more of a squishy kind of factor. That's kind of how I describe it. And the way you can kind of imagine this is that your period that's kind of going like, you know, like this nice, like, you know, month to, let's say like a month to month, like, oh, or let's say day, like your day temperature, day temperature, day temperature. If all of a sudden it starts changing more frequently, now all of a sudden you have a trend basically in how your um, period changes over and over again. And this is what we say, there's a covariance change. So going back to the notebook. Okay. Basically we say like our covariance is not a function of time. So you can see hopefully like all these different parts and this is just a covariance or a change in the mean, a change in just the variance and this is a change in just the covariance. Okay, any questions about these three different trends? Okay, and this is to say like as long as our data does not exhibit any of these parts, we call it stationary. And in reality, we actually want our data to be stationary. We want to be able to find uh, stationary um, data. And the reason why is like, well, let me ask you guys, why would we want to find stationary um, data? To find patterns and make predictions. Good, right? If we can, if we can figure out if we can make it stationary, we can basically say we explain either uh, we'll find a ways to get rid of trends. And so we can either get rid of this trend and say, oh, we actually understand the data. And basically all this little extra stuff is essentially randomness or a certain periodic you know, function and we can make better predictions. Um, we can also explain like the way I kind of see this is like time series, like all these little squiggles, it's essentially something's causing those squiggles. So we eventually want to like get down to the point where it's just randomness, where it's like stuff that we can never figure out, or maybe some weird, you know, this that we haven't detected yet. But um, if we can remove all these parts and get just something that's stationary, that doesn't have any of these kind of attributes, we now know we have it, most of it explained. Uh, the rest of it basically is either a night, like in reality, you're never going to get a nice little graph like this with nice little periods that things are going through, but um, you'll probably get something that's more random. And if it's more random, that's actually a good thing. It means that it's just a bunch of noise and all we want is to be left with a little bit of noise. Okay, so, excuse me. So this kind of shows like a no, no trend. So 
in this case, like it's it's stationary, and you can notice that it's not as pretty as like this little picture right here, which is similar to what the curriculum has too. Um, but you can see here is like this. Um, there's nothing obviously changing in here that is either there's no trend upward or downward. The mean doesn't change. The variance doesn't change. You're not seeing something that's heteroscedastic. Maybe over in the middle here, there might be some heteroscedastic, but for the most part, it seems relatively random. Okay? And then there's nothing with the period where you're not seeing a huge random fluctuation and then being really squished in um, like further and further. You're kind of seeing more or less about the same fluctuations. So this would be considered a stationary um, model or uh, stationary data. So now we can see all these different kind of trends that we look for. Um, does that make sense to everyone for stationary, like what that means? Okay, cool. And I know it's kind of confusing to call it stationary because it's like kind of moving, but the main idea is like it's not moving in a certain way. Okay, so the next part is like a linear trend, which you can kind of see what we saw earlier. This, for example, has an upward trend. This one has a downward trend. Okay, I'm not gonna really, unless you guys want me to go further than that, probably that's pretty obvious. Is that like, oh yes, there's clearly something going down even though there's some fluctuation. And this one's clearly going up even though there's some fluctuation, okay. Uh, another one is an exponential, which is obviously, I guess you can kind of guess, is we're actually using um, going in this exponential direction. So again, what's interesting is that exponential trends um, look very close to a linear trend at first. So you can kind of see as if I drew a line right through here. Um, here we go. If I drew a line at the very beginning here, it looks like this a linear trend, right? For the most part, I could draw a line. But as we extend this data further and further, we can actually see a linear trend is going to get worse and worse and worse. In fact, this is a, a marker of an exponential trend. And this is why it's really tough. Um, like, if you're investing in the stock market, for example, you want to be on an exponential trend going upwards, right? You want to get that, you know, like, yes, I want to get better and better and better, right? Um, the hard part is identifying when an exponential trend actually occurs because at first it starts off as a linear trend, if that. Right, and then you'll eventually see it increase over time, and this is just going to be difficult to detect at first. And so the only way to really detect is that for longer periods of times you see a huge exponential. Okay, and just to clarify, make sure everyone understands the terminology. When I say exponential, does everyone understand what that means, like um, function-wise? So good. So yeah, exponential just to reemphasize is kind of like going up like this. It's usually represented by e to the power of x. Right, or really just any number. It could be like three to the power of x. It's also exponential. And basically just keeps increasing very, very quickly. Okay. All right. And no other questions? All right. And then uh, a periodic trend. And you can see here, as you might guess, um, we see some frequencies, um, some changes over time. In this case, um, I don't remember what this data was from, uh, but you can see like the daily minimum temperature. Um, for example, you might just have a different trend depending on um, what time of the year it is, right? So that, oh, in the winter it'll go down, and in the summer it'll go up, and you might have this back and forth, back and forth. And you can see even within this part um, from 1984 right here, um, you can see this trend going through. And there might even be trends going up in here, like this periodic part, so there would be a period within a period, so there's something to look out for. And you can see here clearly is that there's definitely a very uh, large part and then a low part, a lot higher part, low part. In this case, you can probably see there's multiple trends here. There's a period trend and also maybe a slightly upward trend too. Maybe very slight, but you can kind of see this right here. Okay. All right. Um, any questions about any of these trends? Periodic, um, exponential, or linear? No? Thumbs up if it sounds good. Thumbs down if I got I don't know. I see none. So that's close enough. All right. 